Hey everyone, welcome back to Nostalgy TV. Today I would like to discuss what are the most common lies about student loans that we need to stop believing. Let's get into it. Lie number one, can't pay? You're better off putting your loans in forbearance. When you can't scrounge up the money to cover your student loan bill, forbearance can sound like a dream option because this allows borrowers to pause student loan payments for up to 12 months at a time. Your loan servicer may encourage you to put your loans into forbearance because it's a much easier process on their end. But here's what they may not tell you. The interest will continue to accrue on your loans. So while you enjoy the break from those student loan bills, your loan balance will balloon more and more every day. So over time, you could bring your loans out of forbearance only to find out now you have an even higher monthly payment because your balance has increased. Therefore, if you know you will be unable to make your federal student loan payments for an extended period of time, a better option may be to enroll in an income-driven repayment plan. IDR plans can reduce your payments to an affordable amount based on your annual income. Interest will still accrue if you enroll in an IDR plan. However, the government may cover your unpaid interest charges if your monthly payment is not enough to cover them. That benefit lasts for up to three consecutive years from the date you enroll in the IDR plan. And most importantly, this benefit does not apply to borrowers whose loans are in forbearance. Fly number two, once you enroll in an income-driven repayment plan, you're set for life. Contrary to what your student loan company may tell you, it is absolutely vital to reapply for income-driven repayment plans each year. That is because these plans are based on your annual household income. If your income changes during the year, you need to update your income on your income-driven plan in order to calculate the proper monthly payment. If you do not renew your IDR plan, you could wind up with higher student loan payments you can't afford and you may risk falling into delinquency again. Even more so, you have to be enrolled in an income-driven repayment plan in order to qualify for federal student loan forgiveness. If you let your enrollment lapse, you could derail your eligibility for future loan forgiveness. Line number three, we're happy to allocate your payment to whichever loan you want. Student loan borrowers often have multiple loans to manage. Let's say you've got five student loans. One month, you realize that you have an extra $200 to put towards these loans. Theoretically, you should be able to ask your loan company to take that extra 200 and apply it to the loan with the highest interest rate. It is generally considered wise to allocate extra payments toward whichever loan has the highest interest rate. This way, you are working to reduce the loan that is accruing the most interest each month and avoiding spending more on interest than you have to. In the case of Naviant, the CFPB alleged that the company's representatives repeatedly misallocated borrowers' payments. In order to fix the issue, the borrowers themselves had to keep a close eye on their monthly payments and alert the company. It's important to review your loan statements carefully each month to be sure your payments are allocated the way you desire. Some student loan servicing websites make it fairly simple to allocate your payments manually without having to rely on the help of one of their loan representatives. Even so, play it safe and double check your loan statements to be sure your payments are being applied according to your wishes. Paying back student loans efficiently can be a complicated task. That's why it helps to work with professionals such as myself. We can review your loan to craft the best plan of attack to reducing your student loans. As always, thanks again for joining me for another episode of Nostalgy TV. See you next time.